The man who says he has kidnapped Alice has instructed Wake to stop talking to the police and examine the junked car in the sheriff's station's back lot. Go to the back lot. I need some fresh air. Can I go out? In the back, maybe? Of course, Mr. Wake. I understand. You can get there through the cells. Deputy Grant can show you the way. I'm sorry. All of this, it's just a lot to take in. Take your time, Mr. Wake. I understand. Can I ask you what the call was about, Mr. Wake? It's personal. Well, we are looking for your wife, and I'm going to need your cooperation if I'm going to help you. I need a moment, after I get some fresh air. Okay, you can find me here. We'll talk when you feel up to it. Mr. Wake, can I help you with anything? I need to get some air. The sheriff said I could go out back. Of course, Mr. Wake. You can get there through the cell corridor. Just don't mind Walter in there. He's one of our regulars. I thought he quit drinking for good. Oh, no such luck. He went on a bender and beat Danny pretty badly. He started shouting like that the moment he woke up. You can get to the back lot through that door and down the corridor, Mr. Wake. Thanks. The parking lot is through that door and down the corridor. Pay no attention to Walter Snyder on your way. Okay. Just go through the door there and past the cells. The door at the end of the corridor leads to the back lot, Mr. Wake. Right. Thanks. I know, Walter. He sounds really bad. I'll keep an eye on him, but I think the only thing wrong with him is that he's a mean drunk. And there's no medicine for that. I couldn't go anywhere yet. I had to play along with the caller. Alice's life was at stake. Hey! Hey! I need more light in here! God damn it! More light! I don't like the goddamn shadows in here! Hey! God damn it! I don't want to be alone in here! Hey! Deputies, they won't, they don't understand. They won't listen to me. I, I need it to be bright in here. Thank you, man, thank you. Hey, you're all right. You're a good guy. Don't let anybody tell you different. You know, I shouldn't even be in here. The cops, they got it all wrong. See, sure, 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 I beat him up, but I wasn't drunk. I mean, I wasn't drunk at the time. I only got drunk afterward. Okay, listen. Listen, listen, you gotta listen carefully now. Cause here's the kicker. Cause that wasn't Danny. No, sir. I only you wanna know who it really was? I can tell you who it really was. It was a goddamn space alien! I know it sounds like something a drunk would say, but believe me, 
I wasn't drunk then. <laughs> and I told him, oh yeah, well, I don't hear this. Where are your feet, I? The Dark Presence and the Diner. In spite of its human mask, to describe the Dark Presence as intelligent would have implied human qualities on something decidedly inhuman. Nonetheless, it found the one spot in the diner that was dark enough. Some light spilled into the corridor, ravaging it. But it took the pain. Horrible as it was, the writer would soon fix that. He would be coming to the one place where it still had power. There is there anything or he was a, he really took the the bass and all that. I've seen I've seen it twice. The early morning light hurt my eyes and made my head ache. The man on the phone had said go through the fence on the left. It's been another long night, and uh, it's about time for me to sign off for a while. God knows I need my beauty sleep. <laughs> uh, just one more item before I go. It's been a busy night for the sheriff's department. We've had a few broken windows, even a report of shots fired on Main Street. Deputies Mulligan and Thornton had to deal with two intoxicated young men who were celebrating the completion of their Deer Fest float. Now, folks, we get this every year. I know it's exciting that the big day is almost here, but let's save it for the party and leave the gunplay for the shooting competition, huh? There's no point in getting all worked up yet. The caller had told me to find a hole in the fence behind the police station. There was something for me in an abandoned car. I'm in the truck. Nitro grow. It fades out like Silent Hill style. <laughs> Hold it, or is it just trying to tell me where to go? She should be mailing instead of shooting everything. Oh, Wake at Lover's Peak. The kidnapper fired his gun one last time, and the shadow vanished into the darkness it had come from. 
See? Nothing to it, Wake. The thought of Alice in his hands was revolting. We stood on the wooden platform of Lover's Peak, the waterfall on the mountain behind us, the lights of the radio mast blinking red in the heights above. I fought with the urge to take a swing, force myself to speak. Let's cut the act now. Where's my wife? Alice's driver's license had been placed on the front seat. The caller meant business. Barry? Ow! Ow! Thank God! Where the hell have you been? I've been trying to reach you for a week, you and Alice. I've been worried sick. I flew out yesterday. I'm here, here in Bright Falls. Barry, listen to me. I'm at the sheriff's station. Come and get me. I can't talk now. Ow! What the hell is going I had to get the sheriff to let me go. I needed to get to Elderwood National Park to meet Alice's kidnappers. Thanks to the sheriff's station. Oh, the way you kick, why can't you just kick the fence now? <laughs> Looks like I could use this to go up there. <laughs> Just kidding. A writer is a light that reveals the world of his story from darkness, shapes it from nothingness. The way a sculptor carves a statue from a block of granite. If I stop, the world I'm making dies. Darkness will reclaim it. It's a long, hard journey into the dark. Alice's life is at stake, but I can't think about that, or I'll lose it. The dread lingers at the edge of perception. I'll push on. Anything is possible here. I'll write the story. I'll save her. Hmm. Yeah, it's kind of feeling like Returnal in a way. Minus the... I can't sleep with lights unless I'm like super tired. Marvelous, Sarah. I just wanted to settle all the damage the Anderson brothers might have inadvertently caused on their recent and regrettable little outing. They are not accountable for their actions, of course. I can assure you that my staff has been reprimanded. Tor and Odin never caused any trouble to anyone when they were still living at their farm. Indeed. All we can do is to slow down the progress of their dementia. Are you feeling any better, Mr. Wake? I'd like to leave. Am I free to go? Well, we still need to talk about... Am I under arrest? No, of course not. But I need to know where you'll be staying so I can get in touch with you. I'd avoid the motel. The Majestic is known for its roaches. The cabins at Elderwood are pretty nice, though. That sounds perfect. I'm Dr. Emil Hartman. I'd like to invite you to stay at Cauldron Lake Lodge. Did you talk to my wife? I had the pleasure of discussing your situation with her on several occasions. Did you set something up with her? I invited her here. My clinic is a place where... Oh! Hey! Oh, my! Take it easy. Nobody move! Get your hands off of my client! Who are you? I'm Barry Wheeler, his agent. If you have business with Mr. Wake, you talk to me. You yokels won't know what hit you once I sick my lawyers on your asses. No harm done, Sarah. I'm all right. I don't want to press charges. Mr. Wake, my offer still stands. Get me out of here. What the hell was that about, Al? 
We don't need a replay of that thing with the paparazzi. I thought they were gonna lock you up. I had to talk to someone. I told Barry everything. He thought I was certifiable, but when he heard about the manuscript, I had him. The fact that I'd written something, even if I couldn't remember it, was enough for him. He smelled money, and he believed that Alice had been kidnapped. Anything beyond that was another story. I had a midnight appointment with the kidnapper in a place called Lover's Peak, somewhere in Elderwood National Park. The plan was to rent a cabin. I don't like it, Al. I don't like any of it. It's not good. In fact, it's the absolute opposite of good. Mr. Wake! Barry, you found him! Hi, Rose. Oh, wow. I was just thinking about you, too. Great. I was just bringing Rusty some coffee. He's on the balcony, looking after Max. Poor thing. I really need to go. Great to see you again, Mr. Wake. Later! Who's Max? What an airhead. Jeez, Mr. Takes a Swing at Everybody. This is not her fault. She's a very nice girl and, more importantly, a fan. She even has a fan site dedicated to you. And she was very helpful when I was looking for you. Seriously, Al, what you were saying in the car, just listen to yourself. What, you shot a guy and his body just disappeared? When was the last time you slept? What, are you high? Have you been drinking? No! Look, Barry, I'm missing a week, and someone's got Alice, Do you and everything's just... understand what it sounds like when you say stuff like that? Don't get me wrong, it's a good story, could be a bestseller. But when you start confusing fiction with reality, you're buying yourself a ticket to the funny farm. Right, wait here. I'd come here to rent a cabin, where I could wait till midnight. Look to Charlie, Colombian man. The skeleton of a Colombian mammoth, Mammothus columbi. This specimen, estimated to be 14,000 years old, was recovered from the La Brea tar pits in 1981. It was donated to the Elderwood National Park in 1998, when the Colombian mammoth became Washington's state fossil. Named Bucktooth Charlie, it has seen it has since become the park's official mascot. Cool. Bears. Is that a moose or elk? Kind of looks like a moose. I think it's a moose. I don't know. Sorry if I'm making someone go. Oh my god. <laughs> Pretty sure that's a bison or a fake buffalo. Pretty sure it's a base. Might be wrong though, so I'm not an animal expert. I'm just guessing here. Oh, that looks more like a. Oh, that's a deer. I was about to say stag. And I can't read that, even though they put a lot of stuff. Nuisances, every one of them. They only ruin my tulips every spring. I tried to drain. I tried what? Dousing my garden in cougar cougar urine, but nothing keeps them away, and they come early in the morning too. So I don't even manage to catch catch them in the act. But when I finally do. I've got my rifle loaded with buckshot and ready to go. The problem in the population. The problem is the population. There are just too many of them. Last summer, my husband was driving back home from watery after dark, and a whole herd of them were just sitting on the ma sitting in the road. He drove right into a tree, trying to avoid them. The doctor said he could have died. Plus, it. It ruined our truck. These things are more dangerous than bears. You can quote me on that. L Lorna my Miles. Timeline of evolution. 
Paleozoic era, 600 through 225 million years ago. Mesozoic era, 225 through 79 MYBP. I don't know what MYBP means. Seno? Seno? Cenozoic era, 70 MYBP. Cougar, Puma. Majestic creatures. If you ever spotted a cougar in the woods, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. For such a big cat, they move like they are made of air. Like physics doesn't even matter to them. Just amazing to watch. I don't recommend the people get too close though. And make sure you stay aware of your surroundings when you're hiking or camping. Cougars will see you long before you see them. Park Ranger Restory. Watch. Get this chair out of my face. Historical Elderwood Camping Safety Guide, Mott's Car Rental, Ice Age Exhibit, Clips, Cascade, Range Hiking, Fishing in, Bright Falls, Bright Falls Cuisine. It's that one on the top. Insomnia Relief Fund. Huh. Other funny flag things, no? He kind of reminds me of Joe Pesci when from Lethal Weapon or uh, or um, what's the other character? I don't remember the actor's name. Shoot. Stuffer, spicy barbecue. I thought that said spicy, bro. <laughs> garlic and vinegar? Huh. Usually I hear salt and vinegar, but not garlic and vinegar. Good coffee there. This grizzly bear. Grizzly bear. It happened while I was fishing at my usual spot. I gotta get a little closer. I'd stayed. Oh. Yeah, I stayed out later than I meant to. Sun was already going down. Suddenly this huge animal hambers out of the woods on the far bank. A grizzly and a big one. You don't see a lot of grizzlies second. Oh, sorry. It looks like second, but it's not. You don't see a lot of grizzlies around here. Mostly black bears. They're not so bad. More scared of you than you are of them. But grizzlies are another thing altogether. I froze, of course. I've treated a few manglings in my life, so I know the kind of damage these things can do. Started, started reeling my line in, hoping to get out of they're fast. The grizzly notices me though. Looks right at me. Now, I've got a few trout already in my basket. 
I could tell that Grizzly was smelling an early meal. It started getting into the river, heading my way. I thought I was going to have to run for it in my wanderers. In my waters, sorry. But then the bear stopped. Looked like it was sniffing and sniffing the air. Whatever it smelled spooked the devil out of it. And it bolted back the way it come. Give me a good fright, that's for sure. Dr. Nelson. Interesting light. Huh. Easy there, boy. I'm almost done. Hey, Rusty, right? You rent cabins. Oh, Mr. Wake. I'd shake your hand, but mine are kind of full uh -huh. here. Actually, I'm sorry about this. Would you mind grabbing the registration form from the desk? It's just across from Bucktooth Charlie. Okay, sure. What happened? Crazy poachers. Max here got his foot caught in a trap. They're illegal to use here. Hell, you're not supposed to hunt within the park at all. But that doesn't stop some lowlifes. <sighs> well, at least Max is going to be okay. He got lucky. Max is still groggy from the shot I gave him, and I'd rather not leave him alone just yet. The form's on the desk across from the mammoth skeleton. Okay, boy. We're almost done here. Shh. That's a good dog. He's going to be fine. Poor doggo. Any other dialogue? There's some weird camera angles with the cutscenes. I don't know. If it's because of the PS5, or or that's how the game originally did it, or something else. Seriously, Al, you can't just go and meet a kidnapper. Those situations always end up in disaster. You gotta talk to the cops. She's my wife, and it's my call. Can we talk about this later? No. This whole thing is... Listen, you hit your head. I mean, geez, Al, come on. You gotta understand how crazy all this sounds. If you try to pull a joke on me, freak me out, it's working. Ha-ha, <laughs> let's have a laugh on Barry. Well, you had me going there real funny, Al. You can quit it now. Take the form to Rusty. I think this is the form you wanted. And here are the keys. Okay, you're all set, Mr. Wake. Glad to have you staying here. Thanks. Can you tell me how to get to Lover's Peak? Oh, sure. It's at the end of the nature trail. Just follow the paths, you'll get to it eventually. It's an easy walk. Nice spot, too. Get the keys and get to the car. If you have any trouble finding it, just keep your eyes on the radio mast. It's right below that. Oh, and hey, if you take a walk in the woods, watch your step so you don't end up like Max. I guess I'm a little worried. We got a bunch of campers out there we haven't heard from. It's not like these people are on a schedule, 
But with the traps, well, you know, I just don't want any trouble. Right, thanks. It's the same key that was in the apartment. the door. Okay. Look, Al, you're asking me to believe that you shot a dude who went boop into thin air, a guy who was bulletproof until you pointed a flashlight at him. You hear that from people who end up spending time in padded rooms, strapped to their beds, wearing white shirts with two long tangled up sleeves, and eating a healthy diet of pills. Al, you make cruel jokes about people who believe that kind of stuff. You're the skeptic. You gave me an hour-long lecture on homeopathy last month. What was it? If there's no proof, it's pure bullshit. Period. Guess the laugh's on me, then. Al, come on! I mean, okay. Okay, maybe something weird happened to you, okay? Well, thanks for the heartfelt vote of confidence. All I'm saying is, you gotta throw me a bone here, bestseller. What would you think if it was me? There's no way you should be going out at midnight with a gun. No one asked you to come here, Barry. Either work with me on this or go straight back to New York. Your choice. Uh -huh. Can I take one of the hats? No. So there's no customization. Damn. We should go to the sheriff or call the FBI. Damn it, Barry, they'll kill her. This is not a goddamn debate, Barry. <laughs> I'm going to Lover's Peak. He said to come alone. Okay, okay then. I understand. And you're my best friend, and I'm worried that you're not right in the head. Tell me what to do to help, and I'll do it. You stay here, and if I'm not back by morning, call the cavalry. <laughs> Just be careful with the natives, Al. These yokels are dangerous. Everybody hates a tourist, or it'll be deliverance all over again. Bless you. Oh, this place is trying to kill me. I bet there's mold in here, spores, poison ivy, God knows what. This is so not worth a 15% commission. You want to know where you can shove that flashlight? <laughs> Lock the door when I leave. Yeah, yeah, you go ahead and do what you have to do. I'll be fine. Alone, but fine. In a cabin straight from a horror movie. Where you point that thing, Al? <laughs> Stop it, Al! Stop it! You're giving me a migraine, Al. You know I'm useless with a migraine.
head for Lover's Peak. Cabin's usually this creaky. Is it that way or this way? down the fort. I'll be with you in spirit every step of the way, Al. Walk through the door now. I knew I should have gone to the cops. This wasn't the smartest thing I'd ever done, but I was still angry with Barry for trying to talk me out of it. These people had called me right in the sheriff's station. The cops wouldn't scare them, and they had Alice.
Barry doubts Wake's sanity. Barry had never gotten along with Alice, but he knew Alan loved her with an almost frightening intensity. And now something had happened to Alice. And here was Al armed with a gun and saying things people got put in padded cells for. It was as if his friend had experienced a massive psychotic episode and was now totally disconnected from reality. It scared the shit out of Barry. Barry had the keys to the car he rented. It wasn't a long walk to the visitor center, and it wouldn't be any use to me in the forest. Oddly, when you're running, the dual sense doesn't vibrate as heavily as it should. Okay. I'm just going back to what was that? That was pretty good. Back to the show, folks. As promised, our very own Dr. Nelson has just parked his rear end in the studio. Doc, what's your deer fest plan like? My plan? You make it sound a lot more organized than I ever seem to manage. <laughs> no plan, really. Just taking the atmosphere. I'm getting a little too rickety to do much more than that, you know. Oh, tell me about it. No sack race for us older gentlemen, huh? <laughs> yes, exactly, Bat. But I'm gonna check out the parade, of course. And I'll be one of the pie contest judges, too. <laughs> uh, well, that takes a different kind of constitution. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's my kind of exercise. Now, Doc, seriously, you're in pretty good shape, though. You're the outdoors type. I, I know for a fact you're an avid fisherman. That's right. Matter of fact, just caught a heck of a large mouth bass early this morning. But you're not taking part in the fishing contest? No, no, not this year. Um, see, Pat, I'm just not that competitive anymore. Now I just like to take my time and enjoy the peace of it. It's no fun if I need to worry about what I'm catching, you know? Now, considering your track record, the participants are probably pretty happy you feel that way. <laughs> Well, Pat, that's kind of you to say. Oh. 
on there. Peak, Moonshine Cave, Elderwood, Nature Trail. There it is, everyone. to killing that guy, huh? Why? And it's coming? Yeah, but why would you do that? I mean, you're a nice guy. Normal. Took a kid to a soccer game. So how come at the game, you pick a guy and, quoting from the arresting officer's report here, assault the victim's head area repeatedly with the weapon of choice being a pair of bare fists? Wow. That sentence really flows, huh? Maybe you're not the literary type. Okay. So you mess him up. But why? was that guy? We couldn't ID him. Why would a guy like you do him like that? I didn't like his face. Well, you must have hated it, because you really went to town there. I mean, there's no way to tell what he looked like. No ID on him either. That must be difficult. But then we ran the fingerprints. Got a match. Your prints. Identical. Huh. How about that? Your son said you were wearing a white shirt when you took him to the game. But the white shirt is on the dead guy. It's plenty red now. I won't get away with this. Do you really think that's in any way relevant to me? I had plenty of time to talk to my boy before the cops arrived, you know? He won't stop screaming, am I right? You think he's ever gonna be okay? <laughs> I left my mark. Believe me. You, you bastard. What? You gonna shoot me? What's the point? I'm going to prison.
Where's the ending dialogue? End of the line here, so thank you for watching, have a good day.